This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at electrophilic addition reactions. The carbon to carbon double bond in an alkene is a region of high electron density. This high electron density makes the carbon to carbon double bond attractive to electrophiles. The double bond is composed of one sigma bond and one pi bond. In an addition reaction, the pi bond breaks and the electrons from the pi bond are used to bond other atoms to the molecule. Here we can see an example of an addition reaction. In the reaction we have an alkene which is ethene reacting with hydrogen bromide to produce a halogenoalkane. In the reaction the pi bond is broken and the hydrogen and bromine atoms are added to the molecule. This is known as an electrophilic addition reaction because the hydrogen bromide is acting as an electrophile. Next, we look at the mechanism of the reaction in more detail. So here we have the mechanism for the reaction between ethene and hydrogen bromide. This is a two-step mechanism. In the first step, we have the formation of a carbocation intermediate and a bromide ion. In the second step, the bromide ion reacts with a carbocation. As we can see, hydrogen bromide is a polar molecule. This is caused by the difference in electronegativity between bromine and hydrogen. Because of this difference in electronegativity, bromine has a partial negative charge and hydrogen has a partial positive charge. The hydrogen to bromine bond undergoes heterolytic bond fission. This is shown by the curly arrow which shows the movement of the pair of electrons from the bond towards the bromine atom. The proton bonds with a carbon atom of the carbon to carbon double bond. This is shown by this curly arrow which represents the movement of a pair of electrons from the pi bond of the double bond to this hydrogen atom. When the proton bonds to this carbon atom we have the formation of a carbocation intermediate. In the second step of the mechanism the bromide ion forms a bond with the carbocation producing bromoethane. The bromide ion uses one of its lone pairs of electrons to form a bond with the carbocation. This is shown by this curly arrow which shows the formation of a bond between the carbocation and the bromide ion. And on the right we have the structure of the product which is bromoethane. Next we look at the mechanism for the reaction between ethene and bromine. This is a two step mechanism. In the first step we have the formation of a carbocation and a bromide ion. In the second step the bromide ion bonds with the carbocation. The first point to note is that bromine is usually a non-polar molecule. However, when it comes close to the electron density of the carbon to carbon double bond, the molecule gains an induced dipole. The bromine atom nearest to the double bond gains a partial positive charge and the other bromine atom a partial negative charge. The bromine to bromine bond undergoes heterolytic bond fission. This is shown by this curly arrow which shows a movement of a pair of electrons from the bond to this bromine atom. At the same time a bromine atom bonds to one of the carbon atoms of the carbon to carbon double bond forming a carbocation intermediate. This is shown by this curly arrow which shows a movement of a pair of electrons from the pi bond of the double bond to this bromine atom. Here we can see the bond formed between the carbon and the bromine atom. The bromide ion then bonds with the carbocation producing 1,2-dibromoethane. So here we can see the bromide ion using one of its lone pairs of electrons to form a bond with a carbocation. The movement of the pair of electrons is shown by this curly arrow. And on the right we have the structure of the product which is 1,2-dibromoethane. In the last example we look at the mechanism for the reaction between ethene and an interhalogen. The name of this interhalogen is iodine monochloride. Iodine monochloride is a polar molecule because of the difference in electronegativity between iodine and chlorine. The chlorine has a partial negative charge and the iodine a partial positive charge. Just like in the previous examples, we have heterolytic bond fission of the bond between iodine and chlorine, which is shown by this curly arrow. The iodine bonds to one of the carbon atoms of the double bond. The movement of the pair of electrons is shown by this curly arrow. This results in the formation of a carbocation and a chloride ion. The chloride ion then uses one of its lone pairs of electrons to form a bond with a carbocation. 
The movement of the pair of electrons is shown by this curly arrow. And on the right we have the structure of the product which is 1-chloro-2-iodoethane. So let's end with a summary. In each of the mechanisms that we looked at, the electrophiles are attracted to the electron density of the carbon to carbon double bond. The bond between the atoms in the electrophiles undergoes heterolytic bond fission, with one of the atoms, which is known as the electrophilic portion of the molecule, bonding to one of the carbon atoms from the carbon to carbon double bond. This results in the formation of a carbocation intermediate and an anion. The anion then uses a lone pair of electrons to form a bond with the carbocation, which results in the formation of the product.